Welcome to Much Ado About Dota. This is episode 22. It's June 3rd, Monday at our normal time, back after a two-week break. Um, we had a few roster changes at the end here, but I am joined by Grand Grant, Toby so, One, the Capitalist, and uh, Broodstar. It's not quite the normal roster we're used to, I know. Um, <laughs> Charlie had a family emergency, Bulba had to cancel earlier in the day, and uh, Aoi also could not make it. Um, <laughs> anyways, we have a few topics here today, big topics. Um, we have not yet talked about the TI3 qualifier results, we haven't talked about G1 results, and we have not talked about the 6.78 change log. So. Those are going to be the main topics today, um, but first, let's go around the table and say hello to everyone. Grant, how you doing? Super. Long 10-hour day at Walmart, but I'm here. For, uh, nope. for our viewers who do not know you, you want to give a little intro for yourself? Uh, I have been around the Dota scene for like, what, 10 years? Uh, I like casting, I like watching Dota, and that's about it. Sounds good. Toby, how's it going? Uh, it's going well. It's going well. A little tired, been casting nonstop, but casting good shit. So yeah, I'm feeling good, man. All right. The Capitalist. Mm -hmm. How's it going? I've, I, we've actually never met before, and I still haven't really said anything to you since you've been on the call. So. Uh... Oh, that you know that hurts because we <laughs> actually did meet each other. We met each other at uh, the international, at the very the oh, very last shit. day. It was like after everything. Yeah. All right. I don't blame you for not. Remembering. I wasn't getting much sleep there, so <laughs> that's okay. I mean, I'm doing okay considering the fact that I've had to spend like my whole entire day with Toby. First casting, then we played a pub together, and now I'm gonna have to spend the next hour talking Dota with him. Like, yeah, I hate oh, you too, Jesus. capitalist. I hate you too. Yeah, and we've both seen your game knowledge. <laughs> okay, that was uh, yeah. Speaking of game yeah, knowledge, Grant, let's. Uh... Grant, I really expected better from you, Grant. Like a whole lot better than you. Did you? Yeah, as in like better, as in like put more effort into it. Oh, game knowledge. Oh, okay. It's like it's like freaking saying, oh, your sister. <laughs> I expect better, Grant. All right, final member of the panel here is uh, Broodstar, who commonly posts on NA Dota. Uh, what's up, Broodstar? Hello. Um... I guess for those who don't know me, I'm NA Dota's resident, you know, basement nerdgen thing. I'm everything wrong and toxic and cancerous with NA Dota, all that. Um, sometimes people call me the Arteezy Slayer. I also go by What's Your Dick Like? I think that's me. That is you. Um, seen atop the IXDL rankings quite often uh, as well. Yeah, your one dick question like. <laughs> Wasn't Toby the one who actually forced you to change your name? From what's your he dick was. like, homie, during an official match? <laughs> well, you know, can't blame him, but yeah. lost respect points and whatnot. <laughs> Gotta keep it clean, man. Gotta keep it clean. I bet nobody says that shit to fucking Matt or whatever. No, I just censor his name because he won't change it, but he doesn't actually write offensive in his name until you <laughs> put it together. Ah, oh, well. All right, uh, shall we talk about the international qualifiers since we haven't talked about that yet? Grant, uh, let's start with the Western qualifiers. Did you expect uh, did you expect those results, or were you looking for a little bit of Rock's kiss, or what? I think everyone was looking for a little bit of EG, and then <coughs> EG did right. their normal. Right. Well, okay, <laughs> all the Americans were looking for EG, and then they just completely failed. I think everyone expected Maus to, to make top two, so that was pretty expected, and I don't know, just well, DD EG, stepped it up. EG came out of the gates hard, though. They were looking really good first couple games. Yeah. But they have several players who are known to throw games, and they lived up to that name. That they did. Toby, any, uh, any thoughts on the final results of the Western Qualifiers? Yeah, Cinderin's a dickhead. Uh, let's put that one down there right now. Um, every single time we're gonna we're gonna cast a big event together, he goes and gets himself qualified for it. 
Hi. Thank you very much, Sindarin. Uh, I was actually really disappointed in a couple of the teams from the Western Qualifier. Um, I really thought we would have seen a lot better play out from teams like IC Cup. Uh, I think they really, they they really, shut up, Grant. They, sorry. If you want to have Kaya P, go have fucking Kaya P. Um, but if you like IC Cup, they they really showed inexperience in the competition. Um, but they can do so much better. So I was a bit, I was very disappointed in them. Um, I don't think we I don't think anyone was surprised by the results of the Cupad Red Pandas. Um, but yeah, oh, I was oh. I, I was surprised by Rock's Kiss. Rock's Kiss had a really bad day four, like a horrible day four, and Mouse Balls had a great day four. Broodstar, did you uh, expect Mouse to give that performance? Um, well, I think in my compendium I wrote like one EG, two Mouse, like everyone else. Um, but after like the first day, I'm pretty sure I said like every single team sucked dick. Um, but actually, I was pretty impressed by DD. Yeah, I thought they were gonna take it, but you know, I guess with EG sucking ass and DD and Mao's doing well, it wasn't too much of a surprise. Any input on this uh, capitalist? Uh, I mean, honestly, it, it kind of put Roxkis on the map for me. I didn't really think they were that strong of a team, and uh, they performed, you know, decently well. Obviously, they had a bad last day, but um, you know, I'm not really surprised that uh, Mouse took it. I didn't. I mean, like I, I had the same thing as Broodstar. You know, one EG, two Mouse. If I had a third spot, that would have been DD. But you know, apparently, we didn't account for EG throws. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, and can I just go back and comment? Um, Please do. About the whole IC Cup Kaipi thing, if Kaipi was in the qualifiers, they would have won. So, you know, keeping it real. They would have been top two. No, I've hundred percent. They would have been top two at least with Maus. There's n there's no question. Unless you're European, then you would have doubted it. But not just you, Toby. I'm just saying. Like, it seems like the only people who didn't want Kaipi in there were non RTZ fanboys. I want a Kai P in there. I want them in there over Cupad Red Pandas. Oh no! Oh, I agree. Sings when Sings your best player, and he's not even the skill level of like. I pretty sure Beat is could play a carry better than him or a mid better than Sing, and he's your best player. And you get into the qualifiers, it's because you get ten thousand people on your stream, and that's it. But at and the I same agree. time, at the same time, you can understand why Valve made the decision. You you oh, pick yeah. teams not just for their skill level, but for their popularity and what they could possibly do. And the popularity was there, and the keypad Red Pandas were at a boot camp, so the potential was also there. Was it not there at Kai P? Did you see the RTZ hype? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I but oh, besides that, Bone, I mean, Bone 7 is, like, he's been playing for a long time. He's a good player. Come With Me is, his visage is really good. I mean, his earth shaker, <laughs> let's, I mean, TI1, don't forget. But no, yeah, I, I agree with Toby. I see why they invited him, but... They should have just invited them straight to TI3 if they really wanted viewers. Yeah. I agree as well. Uh, um, we, we don't need a return of like TI2 with the European teams, thank you. <laughs> it's, we don't need that again. I mean, you can see why they didn't invite Kaipi. Like, you th you, we know they could have done well, maybe, maybe gotten top two, but, you know, with Come With Me and all that... Twitter shit with Eternal Envy and RTZ and all that, you, just, you, you know they're not like a professional team. And so, like, I personally wouldn't fucking invite them, but whatever. Yeah, I would agree with that. I didn't think the uh, the whole drama about the Kaipi not in being invited was uh, a little overblown. Like, I would agree that probably put them over Q-Pad, but, you know, it's still a toss-up. I mean, obviously, it's not a toss-up anymore now that we've seen Q-Pad perform terribly and break up, and Kai P's still doing well. But at the time, it was there was just too much um, too much insecurity. There were too many teams that you had no idea what they were going to be doing. Everybody's changing their roster, you know. Yeah. All right, should we uh, tie this into G1 here? Um, because G1 had some interesting results that I think is going to affect 
what everyone uh, is predicting going into TI3. Um, man, Alliance, were you guys expecting that? Eternal Envy sure was. I can tell you that. <laughs> he was. He called. He said they'd 3 OIG, and he did better than that. And every, everyone got up on his dick, and they were all like, you're fucking stupid. You shouldn't say anything ever again. And then, you know what? They 3 would IG. I think a lot of people uh, underestimate what the European and U.S. scene is capable of. And it, like, this whole stigma, which is Chinese Dota and Southeast Asian Dota, is so much more like precise and superior. I mean, yeah. I, I don't go along with that. I say they're bloody good. But there are definitely teams from Europe this year that can compete with them. Last year, it was all China. Nothing, nothing was anywhere near their level. But this year, there's been so much happening in the Europe and the US scene. There's so much practice and so much development that I don't think many people should be su surprised by what Alliance did. Um, but they shouldn't be expecting Alliance to do the same thing again. I completely I... agree. Like, oh, sorry. You're good. You're good. You go. I was just going to say the Chinese are going to, like, being embarrassed on their home soil like that, like, Chinese mm -hmm. take this, it'll actually be an embarrassment to them. They lost was, on their was, home it soil. Was the first, it was the first ever Chinese major land that was taken by a foreign team. Yeah, and it wasn't just taken, they absolutely, did they dropped one map, or did they even drop one? They, lo they went 2-1 in a, uh, anyone? <laughs> I've got no idea. I can't, yeah, they did drop, they dropped one game, but I don't yeah. remember who it was against. Yeah, that, I mean, that's just, they're going to, especially people thinking yeah. IT is just going to bow out. I'm they're saying just, it was zero. Zero? Huh? Yeah. Well, they're all idiots, so whatever. <laughs> you, you know Probably how to right. love the people, Grant. You know how to love the people. I do. Shout out to 37 Miller Gang. But no, uh, the, they're, I agree with Toby. Alliance is going to do really well, but I mean, I don't see them taking top three at TI3. And you, you also saw like what happens over the course of tonight and yesterday. Like they lost to Mouse Sports without loader in a best of three, but they also got pretty much schooled by Navi this evening, and then again they lost to Mouse Sports uh, in the EMS one. So yeah, I know that's really much to go on because like then I would like bring in Liquid's performance at G one, and then we could also bring in Liquid's performance tonight, but unfortunately Bulba's not here, so it really doesn't make it as much fun. Yeah, well, poor guy. I don't think anyone's going to take, you know, the G1 results as, like, a set-in-stone thing that is going to, like, be replicated at TI3. I Like, Alliance did well, but I don't think they're going to take it home. You know, it's probably still the Chinese are favorited there. And I don't think Liquid's going to do as bad as they did in G1. Um, as, as far as, like, as I talk with the players, I think they're just, like, not practicing right now and they're not taking the game too seriously, but... I don't know, maybe Boba or someone can expand on that later. Um, but I do think there is still a split between like China and Europe. I um, like I think their late games just way better. But you know, I still think Alliance can do well in Navi, and maybe the split's not as big as everyone thought. So yeah. I think the Western teams are just getting more committed. I mean, it just comes down to, uh, I think you're right, like a lot of times their late like, game's a lot stronger, and that just comes down to practice. That just comes down to the right execution and not making really stupid plays or anything like that. And the more you practice, the less likely you're going to fuck up under, you know, really pressure situations. So I think as we see more and more money coming into the scene, Western teams that are going to be able to commit to practicing a lot more than, you know, the Chinese scene is just go, go, go. I mean, they're constantly in houses. They're doing like, they're doing like fitness workouts together, all kinds of team building <laughs> shit and all that crazy stuff. And, you know, as the more money comes to the Western scene, you're going to see that more often. So, I mean, I'm excited for TI3. Um, I, I definitely, I could see a Western upset. But I think you're right. Chinese is still the favored. Yeah, but like besides that, the whole Chinese, like, I think everyone saw the whole ace thing about how they might start allowing the high tier Chinese teams into lower tier tournaments now. And that'll be a good practice for them because everyone's saying like, well, they, they scrim a lot. That means just as much, but it doesn't in like a tournament environment. So I think that'll be a good thing for them. 
if anyone knows what I'm talking about. I don't know. I don't. Well, I, like I, I followed it, but I think they fucking said that they weren't going to let the Chinese into the smaller tournaments. But like, I'm not fucking paying attention. Yeah, I know. That's why you haven't rang for Liquid in a while. Well, what the fuck ever. <laughs> Yeah, but, right. G okay, no, are we done with G1, or can we talk about the, like, production values, people call it? Yeah, let's do, let's do that, because okay, uh, those I'll... are some, are you going to start with the videos? No, let me start with the, uh, okay, uh, we're going to start, I think it was 10 p.m. my time. The first game, which was the All-Star game, didn't start till I think, 11.30 my time, an hour and a half after. And not only that, they didn't allow the All-Star team to actually pick their heroes, and then after the game, they played 45 minutes worth of ads, three of them being IG singing, four of them being their own websites thing. It, I had to work the next day, and I got to watch two games of Dota in a five-hour span. I, I mean, the games were good, but I didn't like the in-between. I don't know if anyone agreed with me, but it, yeah. There was a lot of ads. Oh, I agree. I was pissed. I was in the same situation where I was like, I cannot stay up this late. And the moment I see this all-star game that's a total joke, I'm just like, I'm going to bed. Like, Especially I was hoping to watch these games. Making but... it a joke. The, the players made it a joke as well. Well, can like you that, blame I them? I don't if, think that's have, if that's what they have to do to, to make it a viable model and to have these tournaments, then so be it. You know? uh, but aren't they, they were their only sponsors, right? 17-1- Three seven, I think, was their site. They didn't have a sponsor besides himself, so I mean, that's not really an argument. Why not? Right. Why would they play right. ads for their own site? Everyone's watching from their site. Like no, we're you, watching you, from their site. Grant, Grant you, you still got to look at it this way, and this, <laughs> like, like the way the the way they will have it is they'll have a whole bunch of stuff which is filler content, and then something doesn't go right on stage at a LAN event, and something doesn't happen right. So what do you do? You just keep playing your filler content, even if it's just the same stuff looped up. That's just what you do until players are ready or things are ready. That's their, that would have been their only option. If they just ran out of filler content, then it just keeps repeating for you until they're ready to go. Everything goes wrong at land events. It always happens. That's just if your production is ready to deal with it or not. Alright, that's fair, but couldn't they have got a better selection of ads? I mean, you were watching, Toby. How many times did you see the IG singing video before a game? Um, uh, I saw it once and then switched over to BTS and watched them talking. So it was just as bad over there, all right. Yeah. <laughs> but but at, at least, what? Um, at, le at least BTS were, like, they're having interesting conversations and they had the stream going in the background. I, it, they, they actually gave me filler material that I wanted to listen to, and I was happy with that. I agree. I was happy when, um... When LD was talking, I was fine with that. When Merlini was talking, I was fine with that. The rest of them just kind of sounded like me. Like, they're trying to sound smart, but they're pretty clueless. I mean, I'll admit that kind of is usually like me. And Merlini and LD were the only ones who seemed some sort of usefulness. You didn't like what Kurt was doing? I... He was tall. I mean, he looked good. He had good posture, yeah. <laughs> but that's... that's I. I'm sorry. I, I agree, though. I did switch over to the BTS stream, and I, I listened to him talk. <laughs> no one okay. wants to touch this now, do they? No, I, I, <laughs> no. I, was, I was just thinking, I don't want to touch this subject at all, because, you know, not like we make enemies. Okay. So, well, you've got a good, promising career. Keep it up. Well, thanks, Grant. We do have a lot coming from career. you. Can we talk about 6.78? Because that's what I want to talk that's, about. That's, 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 that's what everyone is here for. After we say good job to LGD for winning East, I guess we don't have to talk about that. But they did a good job. They're, they were the clear favorites, and they'll get top three at TI3. Okay. You're, calling, you're calling it right now, man? Alliance won't. Do you agree, LGD. With, that? Do you agree with that, Toby? LGD top three? I, I, I think anyone who makes predictions before three weeks or four weeks before the event cannot even hope to have those predictions come true. The entire meta will change when 6.78 gets added into Dota 2, and teams can, like, 
they lose a land event or something can go wrong internally. There's so many things that can go wrong in a team over the course of two months that making any predictions now will just be proved wrong by the time TI turns up. That's fair. I still, I think LGD in top three. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a dick, man. You're a dick. <laughs> they are by far, okay, if it's top three sexiest teams, they're one. And then they're two and three, but that's it. I mean, no one disagrees with that. I mean, Misery, Aki, and Brax are the three most attractive players in Dota right now. Yeah, but you don't I want to keep going with nice that. Mike. What's your number two? What's your number two most attractive team? <clears throat> Liquid. Did you just completely skip over all of Fnatic? <laughs> Liquid. <laughs> Fnatic. Yeah. F no. Fnatic. Oh, so, okay. Oh, you've... Like all of Fnatic and like bodybuilder kind of. Except no tail. Hotel's like four foot one. Yeah, he's really short, but he's uh, he's training with the rest of the team. Do like fucking bodybuilder things. He'll drop your ass, Grant. He'll drop. Your oh, ass. you. Oh, you want? Okay. I'm. I'll just bring it up. Everyone knows I work at Walmart. Ooh, Reddit flu. What's that for? But I assure you, in a street fight, I would beat anyone on Fnatic. <laughs> there, that is a hundred percent. Grant you, you looks do, scrappy you as hell. Reason? You do know the reason why Tal is missing from the team most of the time, why Fnatic are playing so bad, is because he's off basically doing like a three-month intensive Carve McGrath training? Well, and you realize, Spitwad, how many times did I beat you at basketball at TI2? Once. Twice. Out of two games. That's true. Twice. Alright. Uh, he's saying corrected, obviously. Basketball skills. I considered it one beating. It was all one big beating. It was. All right, we can we can we can move on. That was move on. LGD right. and it's sexiest. Yes, move on. All right, so we're not going to read through the entire change log top to bottom. So what I think we should do is just uh, throw out any big changes that you think were good or bad or just drastic, and you can just like throw them out. We don't even have to go around in a circle or, circle or anything like that. I'll start with Scylla Bear. Armlet got fixed, and the bear is worth a ton of gold now. I think that's a pretty cool change. 300 gold is a lot. I'm wondering if like 200 wouldn't have been a more reasonable direction, but... It's not going to change much, though. It just means people might be a little bit more cautious with throwing away their bears. Well, that's, that's the idea. and I mean, most of the time it dies when you would... Or it would die and you can just respawn it, so... Yeah, but like a difference between 100 gold and 300 gold, by the time you're breaking a base, that's probably the time when you're going to sacrifice your bear. 200 gold at that point of the game is going to mean very little... It's like losing a couple of familiars. You go, yeah, yeah, resummon. Well, I think the bigger, I think the change was meant like for early game when you're when your bear's like yeah, fucking with bulls and all that shit. You can just kill it, you know. And three hundred gold is a lot at that point. That's like right. a ward and a crow, and especially that you can't like armlet on the bear anymore. That thing was like a fucking bug. I'm so glad that got fixed. Yeah. Yeah. Is Bear still going to be a popular pick then, do you think? Or people are just yes. going to start going Maelstrom instead so. of Harmlet? I don't think the build was that Imba. <laughs> well, then why did everyone go it? There was, there, well, it was there the was, best build, but it's not going to make it There was Lone Druid before Armlet, yeah. man. There was Lone Druid before Armlet. Yeah, yeah Spitwad. Honestly, yeah, I think we might see a return of uh, the Radiance build on Bear a little bit here and there. Just, uh, I mean, five damage buff isn't much, but that was the other thing. Is um, taking away one of the build option builds for uh, Bear and then buffing the Radiance a little bit. I think we might see a, a comeback of that a little bit, but it, it seems honestly, like you're, you're you're just yeah. You're right. No, you're good. I was just saying, Jay is the only one who builds Radiance on Bear anymore. It seems, if that means anything to anyone. Well, I think you can I think, save I think you've seen more teams do the um, like we saw today, where you just. You five man your own jungle and you catch out that bear. It's it's worth committing those spells to now. Being able to get a three hundred gold off of it, that's huge for uh, starting gold. It's an instant courier, flying courier. Can I th can I throw the bottle out there? The bottle change. Yeah. I think it's, it's a step in the right thought. direction. It's. It's a, it's a huge step in the right direction. The fact that the, bot, like, the, the change looks as while empty bottle, bottle causes Corey to move 30% slower, um, speed burst will still make it reach maximum speed, uh, but it basically shuts down the very early bottle crowing. 
I don't think it'll be. It, it won't stop it completely, but the abuse of the middle lane is definitely going to be restricted. It's still going to be like ridiculous, like thirty yeah, percent, and you can you can just still still speed boost. Like there's still going to be a mass amount of bottle crowing. It's fucking stupid. I agree with that. I, I don't think it goes far enough. But at the very least, it'll stop some of like the safe lane, or sometimes you see off lane or, or um, junglers pick up a bottle as well. And you got like two bottles going back to the fountain, like that kind of bullshit, that's not going to be happening anymore. It's just too far. So at least it stops that, and it'll maybe slow down some of the, the bottle growing. But I don't think it goes far enough, personally. No, I agree. I think they should have taken a tip from the uh, Philippines book. And they should have made it. Everyone was so mad when uh, they introduced the courier. You get it for, like, wait, you get a courier for free, or is that Heroes of New Earth? That's Heroes of New Earth. Heroes of New okay, Earth. never mind then. They also you, made you at a three charge. Okay, you should have made the, uh, the first courier bot can't hold a bottle. But if you buy a second courier, that one can hold a bottle for no, the that Philippines. Would make, that, would make no, that would make no sense at The all. Philippines did it. <laughs> the Philippines always bought two couriers, did they not? When yeah, they, were bottle they crawling. did, okay. but that was a different strat. And normally, when you when you buy two couriers, you sacrifice so many other consumables in other lanes that it actually cripples one of the other lanes. It, yeah. So you're flaming the Filipinos for no, buying two couriers? No, no, no. The, the Pinoy strat works nicely because they, they put their lanes to it, but the current metagame cannot support two couriers. You need to have the consumables in lane. Every, everything is so about, like, the, like, buying an extra set of wards is so much more important. All right. I was just suggesting something. I wasn't like saying Ice Frog do it. Like, <laughs> and that's not actually bad. Like, you should have someone like sacrifice something for you to be able to bottle crow. Because just having a bottle crow for free is just it just makes like watching midline so stupid now. Both teams are just bottle crowing. There's no more like getting runes or just outplaying the other opponent. I don't think it'd be a bad change. Yeah, it takes a lot of skill away from the mid lane, and it makes it a worse game to watch from an observer standpoint when you see oh look these neither one of them should really die because they get low they'll just get another bottle charge up throw it back and just spam their abilities it's it doesn't take much so i mean i don't know if it may be just something like the courier can't hold anything but a bottle i don't know what it what it would be um to keep it in check but i think it's still going to be too ridiculous yeah, but I mean, it has promoted the use of, like, strength heroes again. Like, you didn't see much Dragon Knight middle or Magnus middle and besides Bottle Crowing. And if you took that away, I, you probably wouldn't see Magnus mid much anymore. Um, Which, I'm, I, I'm, I mean, that's I'm a good point. That's, yeah. I'm fine. I'm, I'm still making the call the Brewmaster will be the, uh, the new solo mid. And Even why is that? Changed? Yeah. Yeah, maybe, I, maybe that's where we should go to next, because I know Cap, Cap and I were talking about this and doing some math on it, um, but check out the Brewmaster changes. Eganim's Primal Split units now gain your current level of Drunken Brawler. That's well, that doesn't seem... One. And because and Cap and I were talking about this as well when we were going through the change log, and one of the big things we're talking about is like all the Eganim's changes, how many of them actually even matter? Because you look at the heroes that will pick up an Aghanim Scepter. And Brewmaster always gets an Aghanim Scepter. But now he's got a Drunken Brawler. I think we've worked out... What was the math of it? We, a Brewmaster, an Earth Brewling hit, will do 550 damage if he hits with a Drunken Brawler. That's one hit from him. He does more damage than the Fire Panda does. If, even with the changes where the Fire Panda like does, uh, no longer does the upgrade damage with the Aghanim Scepter... With the Drunken Brawler, it doesn't matter. The Brewmaster can literally obliterate an entire team. Yeah, for, I mean, you're basically taking away 40 damage away from the uh, Fire Panda in exchange for all of the pandas getting a 25%, 200% critical and a dodge chance, which is also really important in the late game. When you start getting into those pandas where Panda becomes irrelevant because he pops his ultimate, and yeah, maybe hits a Cyclone, but everyone just targets the Fire Panda, and all of a sudden you've got a stun and a Cyclone, and soon those are dead too, and Panda dies before his ultimate's even done for. Uh, you know, that's going to add some, a little something um, to this Panda's a little bit more survivability. That's going to be really important. And uh, the damage output, I feel, is still going to be more. 
If you get some sort of additional stun or slow, you blink in, you clap, you pop your ultimate, and some you get some additional disable on top of that, both the stone and the fire panda are going to be able to put out a lot more damage. So I think it's a really big buff, and I, I agree. I think we're going to see Brewmaster picked up more. I don't think the other Aghanim's changes are worth... Um, I mean, the, the ne Necrolite one is interesting, but I don't think it really is going to change the hero. The Scythe upgrade that he got the non agonims one, that might make the hero a little bit more viable, but Aghanims itself, um, so all the other Aghanims upgrades. You're I discounting think. Wisp being able to two, TP two heroes as not good? Wait, wait, what? Did I miss Wisp that upgrade? That, yeah. I missed that one. <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> what the fuck are you on about? Where? It's, in a, it's under Vegas. Wisp, not Aghanims. No, I'm just kidding. He can't do that. But how oh good Jesus would, like, Christ. honestly, <laughs> I think we should I knew, I knew we were getting trolled. <laughs> no, but I think that, like, Wisp, people, yeah, never mind. It just wouldn't be a good change. That was my bad. Brunstar, <laughs> what do you think about Panda being the only one who's actually playing a competitive game? Yeah, I don't think, I don't think that Eggs really does anything. Well, well I just I mean, Panda it does in general. Bit. It does a bit. Like, the hero's good, but, like, 50... Like, 25% of 200 is, like, 1.5 times the damage output, I think. And then plus piercing, plus armor reduction. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, like, a huge buff, but it's a small one. Um, the other eggs changes, I think they're all pretty negligible. Like, Doom doesn't do anything. Ancient Apparition sounds imbalanced, but, like, you're never going to build an eggs. I think Necrolite has one, but again, it's not that great of an item on him. I mean, the concept's cool. You can stop a buyback, but you're never really going to get there. You're never going to pick a Necrolite. Well, you are. When? But I, fucking IG picks him. I think okay. he's a pretty good and what they hero. do at uh, G1 League. Well, whatever. Necro's just a Huskar counter. Yeah, exactly. What he said. I, I would disagree. I think Necro is, is viable, and I think the buff that they gave him, um, the Aghanim ones is, who cares, but the, the one where if he throws down his scythe and somebody else gets the kill, it'll still um, give the kill to Necrolite. That's really important. I mean, he relies so heavily on being able to get those kills for um, whatever ability for the region, um, and then just be able to snowball from there and spam his Q. Um but I think he's still very much a niche pick. Well, he does, like, really decent in push strats. I think that's his main, like, selling point. You can just pick, like, four pushers and then have, like, some sort of... like Not really a carry, but he's sort of like a semi-carry farming thing, but he mostly he just heals you and pushes, and that's what he's good at. I think, like, you can... You can sort of just like bait a solo bear pick or something and then just all in push that shit. Which people already do with solo bear anyways. No, I mean you give them solo bear and then you pick Necrolite and push him to the ground. Wow. Well, whatever, that's just theory. You're a prophet, yeah. I'm a fucking prophet. <laughs> I mean, the other, I think the other really big change in the changelog is the changing it from a 2 1 2 to 2 2 1, right? Yeah. It, is that like how does it work now? It's you ban two still, and then what happens? Honestly, I'm not. I'm not really up to date. You you ban, it's much you ban more back two heroes. Place, the the team that banned first picks first, and you pick um, you pick one hero, and then the next team uh, picks two heroes, and then you pick one hero. So basically, yeah, it's kind of like the same start, except you get chopped in two. And then the second team gets to pick its fucking. Yeah, there we go. Fucking there. Right. Better, better than, yeah. okay. I, you explain I'm it. not saying 2 2 1 is different than 2 1 2, but Ix Mike said it was the biggest change, so I just figured I have to bring it up. So if anyone said that uh, idea was stupid, you're calling Ix Mike stupid. I don't know if it's a 2 1 2, but I'll just call it that now because it references a great rap song. No, it was 2 1 2. You picked 2. That, wait a minute. It's, All right, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm calling like lost. three I'm, two. I'm lost right now. Or like two three or some shit. You call it two two one maybe. Yeah, sure. Well, yeah. Whichever sounds smart, we'll go with you. 
I, I think uh, I like this just because I think it it promotes a lot more strategy to the drafting phase where you're going to see teams address the other lineup. Like in the second banding phase, it's just like, uh, what do we not want to play against? Uh, this, this, this. Yeah, that works. You know, like occasionally they'll they'll ban out some heroes that are, you know, important to the other team's lineup or maybe some heroes that would specifically counter them. But it's just like three heroes is such feels like a laundry list almost. It's just like uh, whatever, especially if they're all in a row like that. So I really like the breaking up of picks and bans. I feel it's um, it's gonna allow uh, allow a lot more strategy into the drafting phase. Yeah, no, oh, definitely. Oh. It it changes your mindset if anything. I think we also forgot Omni Knight. We got the Omni Knight eggs. It's not like global or something. Um, I think that's the only one that might be yeah. and affects just, buildings. Yeah. Yeah, global and buildings. Um, I, Omni Knight's like a really strong pick again for pushing. You can just like build a mech pipe flags and then just push it to the ground again. But um, like when you get eggs, the game's already probably over. Like if you have that much farm, so I don't know if it's gonna do anything. Nor is like really being a global spell that much of a benefit because GA pretty much hits the entire screen. But yeah, all these eggs buffs weren't that great. Like the silencer one, curse of the silence, like a really terrible spell. And if you level it, you're probably stupid. So yeah, but I mean, now do you think people will level it? It's like a real. I cannot. It's like bottom three spells in the game. I think like yeah, it's not worth it. Leveling curse and leveling gyrocopter is like homing missile. Those are like really fucking terrible. Yeah, Korok, you moron. Yeah, Liquid does that for some reason. I've got no idea. Yeah, I don't know. You rank for him, so you would have the knowledge of why like T C or Korok would level that. I mean, they went to China. You didn't, but they also build Helm of the Dominator. Well, that's when yeah. okay, that's to stack creeps when the supports can't. But, I mean, I'm sure you watched their games. You knew that. Well, they play Dota. I don't. <laughs> That's fair. I'm wondering if the DK change as well is going to be a big thing. Mm. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the DPS, the corrosive breath, is actually going to carry in an AoE effect in the second level dragon? No, I don't think so. That'd just be ridiculous. It's just the it, damage. It's, is is just the damage to the original target? Yeah, because like the, the one you I think. Yeah. The one you hit or receive the cross. The, the well, it's not going to be hit. like it's not going to be splash slow. If that's what you're saying. It's just going to be you get splash damage and you get corrosive on that one target. Yeah. So they pretty much just that. added the two together. Has, has anyone tested that in Warcraft Three though? Uh, we I believe Cyborg through. Matt has. If you watched his stream, and that is confirmed. <laughs> okay. Alright. Cyborg Matt is, is gone, so that's fine by me. Thank you, Basically, Cy base Cyborg. You can, you can just level it now instead of holding on to that skill point until 16. Wait, you held on to it? I don't fucking level the fire dragon shit. No, I mean, but you don't just get stats? Well, I mean, when you're like 15, you gotta, you gotta choose between leveling yes, it or then just you holding hold on to it. I thought you yeah. meant 10. Yeah, you just sounded kind of foolish there. It'll allow, it'll allow, I mean, it's a minor buff that'll allow people, sometimes you would see, uh, rarely you would see those Dragonites who do get it at level 11, that's because, like, some support is ancient stacking and they're just going to go ham on farm or something like that. But now it allows them to do both, right? Now they can go for that push lineup while also being able to farm up on, on Dragonite. And I, I mean, I really like it, but it's not that big of a buff. It's minor. Right? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's good for DK. It's a small buff. He's already getting picked now. It's just, it buffs him a little bit, which is nice. Honestly, I think I the, was, the ward change is one of yeah. a really important change. Um, so initial stock now starts at 1 instead of 2, and the um, sentry ward is down to 800 instead of 950, and the quelling blade, you have some sort of ranged that you can cast to chop down wards. Um, this is a big win for junglers. Wait, didn't they just... They did something about that in 6.78b with the Quelling Blade, but I forgot what it was. 
I think they already took it out, no? I know they fixed something in 6.78B to 6.78A with the Quelling Blade on wards. Yeah, I don't know what it was. Fixed yeah. damage doing, it did damage to allied wards. Oh. I, I think thought that was intended. Yeah. Like, he, he would say you could just, like, plan a sentry ward smack down in the middle of your own camp, and then you could just Quelling Blade it after you dewarded. So you just, like, save out the number of oh. wards. Yeah. I guess that wasn't intended. Yeah. That that would have been really smart because that would have worked well with the decrease in range to the counter wards. Like I don't know if somebody's actually gone through and mapped out 800 range, but I'm sure there are certain counter ward spots like the radiant jung or the, the radiant ward camp, the pull camp. I think someone already posted that, that one. Like the furthest range to the left and the furthest to the right, that the the ward doesn't really make a difference now. Like you can still get it as you would have before yeah. in two main different spots. Okay. I think. Uh, one thing it does for the pulls is the dire one. I like. I went into training mode and tested this just to tell Ike's Mikey suck dick. But you know, like that little like dip in the trees where you would usually place a sentry ward. It yeah. no longer covers like the whole camp. There's like one or two spots you can just um, you can place a sentry or a ward and not have it scouted. So I think it's just to try to like even it up because Radiant always takes two sentries to cover the whole camp and Dire only takes one, but. It's still a lot easier to deward on the dire side. Yeah. And now you're not going to see teams go in. I mean, they could still do it with counter wards, but it's not nearly as effective. Just when you pick up a jungler and then you see a team like five man down into the enemy jungle and place like three different wards into the camps, and it just fucks up the jungler so bad that he has to go into the enemy jungle. They, like, they can no longer do that. Not nearly as effective. I mean, they could throw down counter wards, sure. But that's only three minutes, so. I so do we like the change or don't? I like it. I like it. I don't really Bird. care about it. <laughs> I don't really care either. I don't so think you, it's that big of a deal. You don't think only what? You don't think only initial stock now starts at one instead of two. You don't think that's big? Like people wanting to block a Chen or an enchant right as these heroes were becoming big again? Not that they ever dropped out, but we've been seeing it more again. Uh, I think you just fine. do it with sentry wards. Yeah, you can do sentries. You can just be a little more active in body blocking it. Use your obs wisely. I don't know. Yeah, still, well, I mean, if you go in with counters, right, and you throw it in, usually you're at a point where it'll be gone by minute three. Because you're in there so early. You're not waiting for the you know, zero minute mark. You're not going to stick around in the enemy jungle. So I, I think it's it's a buff, but it also adds in. Uh, there's a lot more viability to um, some early ganks, like going into that sort of 15 to 20 minute mark. You're still going to have a limited amount of wards, whereas, you know, with that extra set of wards, you could get in a lot of vision during that time. Now they're constantly going to be wards on cooldown, and that's going to allow teams to be um, a lot more aggressive. I feel like if you just like it used to be, you counter ward, but you. Like, two minutes later, they could get that ward back up. Now, it's like, there's a chance that their ward's going to still be on cooldown. They can't really just throw down a ward and have it be countered right away and be like, oh, well, I'll we'll just throw it somewhere else. Score. So, I, I feel the counting ward game is going to be um, a lot more important. It allows teams to be able to roam around the map a little bit more. And, yeah, I, I yeah. mean, that just promotes aggression, and that's good for um, good for watching Dota, at least. Yeah, I agree. At least uh, one little thing, like along with OBS, at least dust stacks in your inventory now. So if you're carrying dust, you don't have to carry three freaking slots of dust. And it's just six in one slot. That's yeah, big slow, slow, I think. What's up with the slow? I think that's kind of weird. It's legit as well, hell. Well, it's because like, dust is kind of shitty. Shitty. Expensive yeah. as hell, yeah. For what it does. Well, yeah, so again, why add a that's... slow instead of just reducing the cost? Well, I don't, I don't know. Because people want to see people want to see hero kills. People don't want to see the Chinese meta game of last year. I guess it only really affects like what, like bounty hunter yeah. and, and phantom we, lancer. And Weaver doesn't care about it. Yeah, yeah, Weaver doesn't care. What about yeah. Funix? Clanks Funix doesn't really care. He can oh, still run it's away. Like fast fifty enough. percent move speed or something. Yeah. All right. If he dies one time, if Funix dies one time as Clanks during TI three because of dust, then I will come back to you. You can quote me on that. I will. 
Um, I think big changes. Cogs, they no longer like fuck you up if you have BKB. Yeah, that's good. That's pretty big. I think Bulba's pretty mad about it. Yeah, it's I like agree with Bulba. Sure as you can actually. play, yeah. In a few hours, you could play. I, I agree. I think uh, with Bulba, I think that Clockwork needed that ability. I think they did need to nerf Cogs. I think maybe just scale down on the range or something. I don't know. It always felt that, that Cogs was hitting farther than it should be. Like, you just get anywhere near. You just look at Cogs and you get hit by it. Yeah. Um, so I felt maybe nerfing the range or something like that. Sure. Taking away the magic immunity, that, that really hurts them a lot. Well, again, Cogs didn't need a nerf. Like, <laughs> those things are ridiculous. You can just like smack them down in the middle of a fight, and it's just like Moses parting the Red Sea. <laughs> but um, I don't know if the magic immunity nerf is what it needed, but you can still kind of like trap and make some then force stuff out. Um, I guess maybe a range nerf would have been better. I don't know, but something needed to be changed. But you don't think this was the right change? I don't really know. I don't play clockwork. I'll just ask Bulba and have him whine to me. <laughs> yeah, he does that a lot. But uh, what about Marana? Marana got quite a few different buffs, and she still probably won't get picked at all, will she? Besides what a by like Fluff. Hero. <laughs> Not yeah, good like, enough. Yeah, wasn't Fluff the only one who like picked it ever? And like, ew, we ew, we saw that win. I, I wish it would be picked because it is a fun hero to watch. Yeah. Well, it's, I it's think fun they, to watch, fun to play, but really that hero doesn't do anything. Most Korok, of the time, Korok said so. that she needs like base damage or a better attack animation or something. And I pretty much agree with that. Yeah, She needs more viability as a semi-carry. And while increasing, like doing extra damage based on long shots and arrows, that's cool. And Moonlight Shadows, like you actually see Marana's pick it up now because it doesn't cost a whole lot and lasts a really long time it's not enough and i agree that would be perfect just a little bit more base damage or something to make her more viable as a semi-carry where she can actually last hit against other heroes instead of just getting crushed in cs every single time mm -hmm. i remember i had a chat with loader about marana and one of the major things he said needs to be fixed was actually the arrow the arrow is just too small and not prominent enough yeah. It, does, it, does, it doesn't work the same way as it did back in Warcraft 3. So I think, I think it's beyond just damage. It's just the mechanic of the hero. Or at least... I think it does. L L Lotus says that and I speak through him. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a... Yeah, it's probably smaller. I don't know if it's like a visual sort of uh, effect or if it actually is. But even, even if it was as big as it was in Dota 1, the hero just like doesn't do anything. You can just like ignore her completely in a team fight because she doesn't do enough damage, and I think that's her biggest problem. Yeah. Excellent point. <laughs> what about the blank dagger? Got a, a slight buff, fourteen to twelve seconds. Are we to go back to where uh, eventually Ice Frog will make it? So if you take damage, you can still blink, or will that never happen again? I hope so. God, I hope so. That was so much fun. That was a good time to be a Dota player. Yeah, then maybe Virtuals Pro will be good again. Why do we lo Why do we make BKB good enough where everyone gets it? Why can't that be Blink? Just buff Blink. It's more fun. Yeah. I hey, I I want Blink back. Free Blink. Are you willing to like? I want to like, get turny with it with like the old Blink, so you can just like test if it would be stupid or not, and then I'd like form an opinion around that. But. I don't want to just rely on like point forty eight B memory. Yeah. That, well, we that already have the proof of concept. Far, but... That was that was the best, the most exciting period of Dota ever. Why wouldn't we just go back? It was extremely hard to like, as a caster. It, it was extremely hard to follow what's going on. You had a Sand King blinking over to the left with one HP, and then you had a Skeleton King, another SK to the right, then Soul Keeper out of Blink Sunder. So you have three SKs running around Blinks, being able to do whatever they want. It's just really confusing for people, I guess. Did anyone actually call Soul Keeper SK, though? No. No. Right. I did. Whatever. 
So you you had three SKs. Yes. Okay. Don't people usually call him TB? Yeah. Terrible. Well, something? I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I think so, but you know, people nowadays. No, I don't. And the uh, all right, how about the biggest change of this change log? Buckler, armor AOE increased from seven hundred to seven fifty. <laughs> Hell yeah. Good. That is just out, out of this world. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you being serious? Buckler uh, on every hero. No. Okay, but a real one is is Centaur gonna make a a splash in the scene or no? Because he's actually in CM mode now. Well, every time I play against him in public, it's just stupid. Everyone goes he's, like, he's, he's a broken hero. Yeah, he's such a broken hero. I was actually discussing this one with um with Gold Black a little bit. And and he was basically telling me that he'll, he almost thinks of first banning this hero, just because he knows just how much trouble it's going to cause in every single game. It is like a really stupid strong hero, and so is Troll. That thing needs an arc. Troll hasn't been added yet, though. Was he? No. It doesn't matter if Troll will be added. <laughs> oh, you don't you don't think Troll's a good hero? Um, no, but my 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 opinion kind of goes back to I mean, I can th I can thank South America for that because the first time I ever got like exposed to Troll Warlord was after about fifty minutes of farming in a jungle when I first tried to cast a South American game, and it was possibly the worst shit I have ever cast in my life, um, just because it was fifty minutes of a troll farm and no one else doing anything else on the map. Sounds about right. Yeah, Brazilians. Oh, let's not even get on that subject. There's hey. one decent. There's one decent Brazilian. What's his name? Uh, that guy who f King RD. That guy is so legit. That's it. Though. That guy's like three K worth of so items. Many, there are so many decent Brazilians. Who? Name three <laughs> right now. Five seconds. I can say the entire roster of Pain Gaming, which I met at Dreamhack. They're all awesome they guys. Dropped. Now they were. What did they accomplish at DreamHack, though? They didn't have to accomplish anything. They were so cool just, guys. Just, we we yeah, don't no, talk about no, like if they're great players, Grant. Like if we're gonna judge people on that one, what do people they, think of you? They think I'm a god. Have you seen? Okay, let, I won't Whoa. get there because I am one of the greatest players, support players of all your generation. I I want to uh, farm for so, fame. So so this this um so this is the reason why North American Dota scene has a future. It's because you are the like best support player out there. You Rich will change. So, so, back you, so you you're gonna replace the mustache and take out of this. That ain't a good sign. I no I'm I'm horrible now in Dota one. Oh I was legit. No I'm I'm about. Think about you mixed with AC playing. That's I'm like ten times above that. But that's like that's yeah, still. But you're you're not claiming anything with that man. Like AC and myself suck. We accept that fact. I all right. And just, I'm, just, I just saying, you've got ten levels of sucking doesn't make you a better <laughs> vacuum cleaner. In the real world, it does. You know. No, I'm saying I. I'm not saying the Brazil people aren't cool. Back to the main point. But they're not good. They are really cool people, though, for sure. Um, well, back to, you know, back to the change log. <laughs> is Bloodseeker, uh, Bloodseeker, is still he not a real hero? Not still yeah, not a real hero? Not a real hero. I, every, everyone's saying he's going to be, like, OP and shit, but really, so no, I don't think he's going to be bonus armor. But is he viable in any way? Like, HP loss, oh, that's, that's a good buff. That was definitely needed. The the whole fucking dispel before applying its buff, weird. But I don't think it's gonna be know, that big of a deal. Yeah, people were bringing up people were bringing up how through magic community. Yeah, you can offer. apparently you can potion through it now. Is that true? Because no, the, the no damage idea. change it's made, you can now just cast a potion and because run with it's it. Because point removal. Yeah, oh. I, I don't believe that. Sense. It's pretty ridiculous. Pudge got a buff. I don't know. We won't, probably won't see him. Maybe Navi will pick him up again. I mean, it's a reasonably good late game buff. Yeah, the flesh heap strength is quite a bit more. Up from 1.8 to 2.5. It's 
New mid sports. Every team. Pudge versus Brewmaster. New thing. Every oh. team had Dundee. Maybe we'd see Pudge a lot, but I think yeah. only one team has him. Maybe every team would lose to I Cup too. Did they lose the I Cup? Yeah, and the yeah, that's that was oh, on their downhill. But they're coming back up. Did you guys? Oh, we should just talk about today's game. Liquid. They were looking like me out there. Jesus. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they practice. Um, they told me they didn't practice like going into G one. They didn't practice all this week. So. Why would you travel to I China suppose. if you're not going to well, practice and be no, prepared? They, Okay, they flew to China is what I heard, and they had three days there where they just had no access to computers, right? Like, they couldn't get on computers at all, which kind of sucked for them. Why they didn't practice, I don't know. You'd have to ask Fluff and stuff. <laughs> I could understand coming back from G1 and being not being able to practice, travel time, and then just the lag of coming back, but before... I'm yep. not sure. Yeah, you're the one who just um, let's see, didn't practice. Why do you think that is? Well, I think you'd have to ask someone on that team. <laughs> um, I, I mean, like for the few days leading up to G1, I know they were trying to get their passports and all that sorted, so there's that. But yeah. I can't really expand on anything else. That's fair. <laughs> Sorry. Is Navi is I I guess this one goes to Toby. Do you think Navi's back in shape just in time for T TI three or were today's games the other team's fault? They're looking good, but they're not looking amazing yet. They have they've got a lot of work to do. Well, let's face it, I Alliance threw that game today. Yeah, early yeah. On. Alliance kind of screwed themselves up a little bit. I know Alliance also were not taking the games 100% seriously because they were trying out something different with like the Alchemist build. Um, they were they were just testing around with some other things. They weren't 100% saying like these games mean the world to us. It was a style of a game which they've basically already won enough games that they are secured a decent shot at going to the land final. So for them, they're just playing around and trying something different. The game up against Mouse Sports was pretty serious, and Mouse Sports were just playing really good Dota. Uh, but the game up against RV Alliance, that was, yeah, it didn't that took it seriously. Navi still got a lot of a lot of issues with their communication. Um, the individual plays right now are uh, pushing them to some amazing victories, uh, like quick victories. But yeah, they, they know they've still got a lot of work to do. Yeah, I get this one. Uh, this one, this question is just coming from me. How does like how did Europe? I don't know if we can, if you guys like have a form. Like I know NA Dodo, it's a crap fest, but I mean the people come together. Did Europe feel the same way when Light of Heaven, like quit? Like does everyone think in Europe that he's an amazing player as much as NA Dota? I've never seen someone receive that much respect from North. I don't America. think there's many people out there that would ever say Light of Heaven is a bad player. Well, I mean like he's we people consider him like top three. European players of all time. Is it like the same over there? I would say, yeah, he would have that level of respect. Um, I would say a lot of people wouldn't put him in that role right now, though. Espe <laughs> especially I can tell you. Yeah? Okay, Sorry? when I was talking a bit with LGV Int, I think the consensus among the Chinese teams was that Light of Heaven sucked ass. So, I don't know. That's not my well, opinion. But what has LGV Int done? Well, they said there was also other teams, not just them. But I suppose what? LGDN hasn't done anything. I suppose so. I mean, they almost qualified for G1 or something, I guess. They did, they did okay. Liquid made it. I'm sorry. Light of Heaven fanboy. God, he's hot. Well, he so really good. is in a slump right now. He is, yeah. But he is. No <laughs> doubt. Maybe. He'll get it back. Well, maybe he won't have to play on a team with Twist and Mitch. Well, he doesn't <laughs> now. And it's still, not work it's still not working as well as it was before. That's true. I was just, I was just asking you, because I thought he's one of the best players I've ever seen, the Indigo Child. Spitwad, back to you. Back to me. 
Anything else on the change log that's uh, big? Uh, I think Nakes got a, a nerf of some sort. Yeah, open wounds, cast range decreased. Um, it, it, it shuts him down a little bit during yeah. um, uh, during the early game as far as initiation. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if it's just meant to maybe just deter the aggressive trial lane with Lifestealer. Because it means his initiation isn't the only initiation that has to be there, but that's fine. That can be replaced until he can get in close. That's well, fine. You could also, like, solo safe lane or off lane even, and still, like, 600 range was pretty strong for just initiating or getting solo kills. So it's like a step in the right direction, but once you're level, once it's like level four open wounds, there's not much of a difference anymore. No. Yeah. I think it just nerfed his laning a little. Yeah. Yeah. It'll it'll hurt um, some of the um, like Lena and Leshrac when you occasionally see those aggressive tri lanes that don't have a setup stun because they have life stealer instead. Um, cause that open wounds will allow them to hit that stun. That might hurt them a little bit, but. Like you said, once he hits level, uh, he gets level four of it. It's not that big of a difference. So, just to throw something out there, solo mid lion making a return with Aghanim scepter. Yeah, I don't know if you guys mentioned that one before, but That's when I was, awesome. I think that was like the other patch. Though. Twenty second cooldown. No, no, no. It's his, his scepter now. Yeah, it's from forty to twenty seconds. On finger of death. Yeah. The thing that does so much freaking damage, and with an Aghanim scepter, it's a twenty second cooldown. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that shit is broken. <laughs> and mana drain got another buff. Like clearly, <laughs> we're trying to make mana drain a useful spell, and in team fights too, to just stand at the back and spam finger and mana drain to get enough mana to do it again. Is that what we're going for here? I don't know. I think Iceprog's just so committed to mana drain at this point. Like that spell has been there <laughs> for so long, it. and it's always been so useless. Nobody's taken it except for very rare instances. Nice Frog's like, no man, I'm not changing that skill. You will learn to like it. I'll just keep slowly buffing it until eventually it's going to be like 300 mana a second at 1500 range or some crazy yeah. shit. It's going to get to the point where it's really imbalanced and then people are going to use it and then it'll get nerfed and then it'll be back to dead again. Look what happened to Living Armor. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that spell is now ridiculous. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Ix Mike. <laughs> I wish I wish you'd just like remove stupid spells altogether, and then people would stop like leveling them and making me lose pub games. Because every single line who goes like levels on mana drain is just like insta loss. So okay, I've got a question. Is a uh, so the six point seven eight when it comes into Dota, those two heroes are getting added, right? The new the no. two new heroes? No, they're not. Okay. Sorry. I was sure. So when are they going to add Arc Warden? God, that hero's stupid as hell. But that's not really the way heroes getting added into Dota 2 works. Well, okay. Well, sorry. I freaking have to work at Walmart, so I don't have time for all this. God, life's depressing. <laughs> hey, about it. You're, you're, you're an awesome spokesman, man. Whenever I go to America, I now just want to go to a Walmart to see the happy people working there. <laughs> no, I'm... Oh, you you're going to be disappointed. Me. No, you should see me at work. Like, some guy's like, where's the dog food at? Shoot, I'll take him there while I'm walking it out. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm happy at work. Grant will walk it out and take you to the dog food. Because there's, there, okay, Toby, where else can you see hot girls in sundresses 24-7 besides at a department store? A beach in Queensland? Yeah, the beach. <laughs> oh, um, they would probably be in bikinis, which is just as good, but that's, that's a lie. I, w I worked in a gaming store, which was five minutes walk from the beach. All right. Yeah. Back okay, Walmart well, is depressing, then. Sorry. Guess my life does suck. I was about to say, you could go for a classier department store. I mean, at least you don't have <laughs> rednecks. And... I mean, it, it's... Never mind. <laughs> no, it's fine. So, yeah. I think the change oh, you know? is pretty much done, right? No, no it isn't. I've got one last thing. Vlad's an AC now stack. That doesn't mm. sound big on paper, but I get so mad every time I buy both items and I don't have like plus 10 AoE armor or whatever. But Vlad's is already really good and AC is already really good. So I think more people should be picking up Vlad's early game, especially as like support. Even if you don't have any melee heroes, 
just that armor and damage buff alone, it like wins team fights. Do uh do people agree that uh, Medusa's ult is still shitty? Still not a viable hero. Shitty. Yeah, he's awful. I'm It'd wondering another... if Medusa is just a better pickup now against the PL. If that's the main reason for it. I I like that was my pocket strat. I told Liquid about it. I said pick Medusa against Swift CK or PL, but mm -hmm. she got removed and her ultimate now sucks ass or whatever. Well, it doesn't suck ass, but. Um, I think it got better actually, but she got removed. I guess and that's all there is Hi. to that. Hi, Hi, Boba, join the call. What's up, Boba? <laughs> What's up, Boba? What's up? We were just discussing hey, your one and five at G one. Do you have any thoughts on them? Dude, it was one and four. Was it? Yeah, dude. Oh, there's, nice. There's there's six teams there. It's a, hang on, there, there was rumors, Boba, that uh, you couldn't get access to computers. To train for three days before the event, true or false? There, there was like never, uh, there was no time at all to train because they made us do the 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 video stuff before, yeah. like the, the video Chinese taping. bastards. B Bumblebee told me Korok had to spend two days flying to the airport in America to fly to China. So what? there was like three days. He had to fly to an airport and sit there layover for a oh, whole yeah, day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He had he had a layover for like eight hours. So. God, poor guy. We were just discussing the change log. Um, Want to weigh in on like a two minute rant on Clockwork? I said my piece, um, <laughs> but uh, I th I do think something was needed, and it's whatever. I, I, you can still do the cock someone and then force staff out. They just gotta attack it. But it's funny seeing people that just never attack the thing anyways. You know what I'm talking about, VV? They're inside. They just don't want to attack it. No, I never attack it. Yeah, look, you're one of those guys. You're with Cellar Bear. Like you're cogged with your hero and your bear inside. You just don't want to attack it. You're just sitting, staring at the world. Yeah. So Sam, do you have a webcam for us or no? Uh. No. Oh, I'm sorry. So, how's it been? <laughs> Did I interrupt you guys? Mildly, but I'm sure it's No, fine. I think we were just actually passing a change log. I didn't know what Spit what had for us after that. Oh, that's yeah. all I had. I mean, we've gone an hour already. Oh, we're not going to predict TI3? <laughs> Grant! <laughs> we went over that, man. <laughs> Hey, Bulba, would you predict TI3? Yeah. I think we'd take it. <laughs> mouse, mouse ports, number one. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm not laughing. All right, I agree. Dude, they beat Alliance, and then they Alliance, then they, they beat Alliance. Didn't they have Loda, or didn't they have Smog over Loda? They beat, Lo they beat Alliance today, too. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Tom Fu is owning right now in China. According so, to but, so, yeah. but so, so, judging by Liquid's recent results, how do you think they're going to go with TI3? We're probably going to be in 16th with Dignitas. <laughs> Have you guys wait. tried... Like, wait, who's going to win it's... now? Are no, you going to no. be 15th or 16th? Oh, we can, we're going to be 16th. I'm pretty sure we can beat Dignitas. <laughs> I'm so kidding. I love you. I love you, AOI. I'm kidding. Yeah, we all do. <laughs> why, hang on, why is everyone so undervaluing Team Dignitas? Dude, it's, like, it's, it's, just, it's just troll. It's like a mutual. We're, we're, everyone's flaming the American teams. No, I'll be serious with it. Have you seen them? Has anyone on their team played decently besides Universe in the past games for them? Did you watch you yesterday? Do need anyone except Universe? Have you seen they, that guy? I'm, I'm being serious. Universe is their, their player. Him and Fogged are like the only two players you need to watch for. And without the other three practicing, it's going to be rough for them in TI3. I don't know, dude. I, I, I think they're a good team. They've I'm got to be practicing, I'm just, though, trolling. Right? I'm just trolling right now. I think we both have a good shot, TI3. On, my honest opinion is I feel... Uh, I'll be honest right now. And I'll, I'll be... It's hard for me to say this. It is, really. It is, but... Um, I always had this kind of like thing where I just hated the way that... Uh, Western teams played, like I, I I hated the way Alliance played, 
I hated the way Fnatic played with the split push, and I always thought, you know, the Chinese are going to have an easy solution for this shit, and I always talked to Brax, and he's like, oh, Slark's a shit hero, Gyro's a shit hero, and this is also PyCat, and then he's like flaming with CK and everything, and then then going up to G1 and seeing them play, and then seeing, like, it, they honestly, they don't have a solution right now for it, too. So it does feel like it, uh, the ground is more level, but... It's the two months leading up to TI3 right now, which are going to make the difference, so. So who's going to be 16th place, do you think, right now? Um, Liquid and Dignitas. Uh, whatever BB says. <laughs> All right. Toby, who do you think is the weakest team right now? As I said, I'm abstaining until three weeks, three weeks before. All right, capitalist. Weakest team right now. Oh, Jesus, you're going to be putting me on the spot with Bulba in the channel. Yeah, I'll uh, say, I'm, I'm saying Fnatic <laughs> or Dignitas. Fnatic right now no. looks absolutely horrible. I would agree Dignitas is at the bottom. Um, Dude, this is like so, uh, this is such it's just, a, this it's is real. a flame fest. No, it's not. I'm, I'm just saying, who's played the worst right it's, now? It doesn't mean they can't improve. Grant's leading this conversation. Where else did you think this would go? All right, Toby, you can have the next question. I'm sorry. No, I, I think then. Fnatic will come back. I don't agree with Fnatic. I think Fnatic, they proved it in the past. All right, I was, I was a Fnatic fanboy. When they first came in, I was like, look, you give these guys some time, they'll be able to do something. And they did. Now they're, you know, doing Krav Maga and crazy shit like that. In, in, in one in one free but... time, they, they go into a boot camp, which I believe will last them almost all the way to TI3. So in one week, they'll be focused back to what they were. They won't. They won't take it, but they'll they'll be in the middle. You know, I have faith. Wait, who's uh, winning TI three? I'm 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 not waiting for the question from Graham. By the way, I'm waiting for the question from Spit One. Yes, yeah, so am I. That's why I wasn't it's, talking. It's supposed to be leaving us right here. Okay, wait. Oh, Bulba just job? no. Wait, Bulba just asked who would win TI three. That wasn't me, Toby. Can you answer it since he asked it? Who would win TI three right now? Yeah. Oh, you'll answer because Bulba asks. That makes sense. Ridiculous. Mm. All right, Ooh, I'll wait. go. <laughs> I LGD. Think LGD. <laughs> Me LGD. too. I, yeah, LGD. I think LGD they're like China. my favorite team right now, and they, like... they they have a fun playstyle to watch. No lie, like I, I I'm not biased or anything. Yeah, I was fucking sexy, but I'm not biased. But they have a fun like playstyle to watch. Like they'll pick anything and make it work. So they just they just fucked up the meta game. They've got all kinds of like Kunkka, Visage, uh, Spectre shit going on in the East, and Xiaowei's like the best player over there. So I think I have them as the favorites. But again, anything can happen leading up to TI3. It's just dude. I, I think they're. More. I think I think their supports are really good. DDC and DD. Yeah. I think they have like DDC is a really good player. I think like. Yeah, he was like channeling some come with me visage and shit. Or did you guys talk about the come with me visage? No, I I brought it up a little, but, oh. yeah. but it's yeah. At least you brought I it up. I think everyone right? knows Kaipi would win if they went to TI three, but they're not. Yeah, we so. talked about Oh, that. did you guys talk about uh, how Kaipi would win the qualifiers? <laughs> Shut the hell up, Sam. Did we talk about how you guys would win G one if you went to it? <laughs> <laughs> Both or no? No. no, no. Wait, about what? Did we? Both. No, no. Yeah, we talked about, we, me, a few of us said we think, I, we, Toby agreed, QPad should have not gotten an invite for Kai P. And that's about where we got to. Uh, that was based on skill, not the reasoning of Valve. Yeah, well, we, yeah. Just to reiterate that. And um, the changes just came into Dota 2, by the way, for 6.78. <laughs> Oh my nice. god, if I had a graphics card, I could totally play. <laughs> but I don't. Why don't you ask, uh, um, who is it? Brax to buy you one. Brax? Uh, you know who he's dating, right? Oh. Well, we're not on very good terms. Am I allowed to just say it? Yeah. Uh, uh, Here, Toby, hearing? you'd like to hear this, yeah. <laughs> what am I hearing? That toe, Sayori and Brax are dating. Why would I want to hear this? I don't know. 
Maybe you'd be as outraged as I am right now. Did, oh, dude, I saw Misery, Misery's girlfriend at Tia uh, G1. Holy shit! That's all I can say. There ain't, there ain't no words Did, to express uh, that. She was she was teaching something. I heard it was Chinese or something. But... <laughs> oh, she. Was... All right, spit one back to you, dog. <laughs> let's just say. Let's just say. Grant, do you want to uh, nominate Brax for the tribunal or something? No, I. Brax is still a good friend. It's just, I like. Don't you I, feel betrayed? I was, no, I right. respect kids with cancer. Don't you feel cheated? Yeah, think about yeah, the children. Little, I, no, I definitely do, and we brought it up several times, but he doesn't feel the same way, and I'm fine with that. He's still a good friend, who I've known for a long time. Is, is your tribunal like intervention? It's two people get nominated to get banned off NA Dota. It's the only time anyone gets banned. <laughs> is it? Is it really? Like, so it's Thunderdome yeah. for NA Dota. It's pretty much what it is. Two men enter, like, one man like, leaves. Like no matter no matter what you do at NA Dota, unless you get into the tribunal, you won't get banned. It's free speech. In America we believe <laughs> that you have free speech, yes. And that's, that's why we're Canadian. Like Spitwad. Well Grant is such Canadian a good spokesman. Shouldn't have free speech. That's why Faz is getting okay, never mind. But yeah. No enough of NA Dota. Let's talk about join Dota. How do you think your forums are coming along? <laughs> <laughs> Our forums try and be a nice place to live. It's the reason why we normally mute most of your posts. You actually haven't. I have 72 posts, I believe, and none of them have been muted except once. Oh. In which I apologize to you. I'm sorry, Toby. You are a delightful guy to meet in real life. I have no idea what you, what you would done. It's, it's the rule in JD that you can't moderate posts that are about yourself. So, and if you did say something about me, it wasn't me that it actually... It was a Bukake guy, yeah. What or a tryhard rule. Yeah. It was the B-U-K-K-K guy that... Got book? Me. Yeah. From book? Uh, no, yeah, but I... Toby, I hope I get to see you at TI3 again, dude. Hey, That's man, I, I already told you. I'm looking forward to seeing what shit... Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Oh, Grant, are you going now? I Wait, am definitely totally going to be there, yes. Oh, is, is, are you is doing it gonna... Dota House? If I can't, I'm not sure I'll have money. It's either the streets or a well, player's that's going to be post. the cheapest, I think. Well, good, hey, you don't pay for me. Hey, Grant, I got an idea tender? for your new shirt. It's going to be Bra Brax Tribunal or Single. Dang. What if they break up by then? What if he starts to realize the kids are more important than love? Then you've got to have a backup shirt, man. You've got to plan these things oh. ahead of time. All right. Thanks, Toby. I'm, I'm here for you, Toby, Grant. Who's your caster? Who's your caster for TI? Are you, oh, are you we haven't to... talked about that. Who is going to be your caster? Well, after uh, it's eliminated, probably Cinderin. Uh, what, what do you say? Mouse is going to win. No, the, the, com the commentator I selected um, uh, is going to basically stay with me to the end. Cinderin may join me, but we're not going to have that, that plan that we had last year because obviously miscommunication's a bitch with that. Um, so we're not doing that again. Is it clairvoyance? Um, it's not clairvoyance. Um, I've already said it's, it's someone from the EU scene because I wanted someone who could also be with me for the group stages when we cover that from the JD studio. Um, Is it yeah. um, certain M? M? What? Wait, no. It's on Milk, right? No, M Milk's part of the panel, so he'll be, at, he'll be in va uh, uh, Valve earlier. So we you're can't adding actually... A third, you're adding so. a third caster to join Dota, right? Yes. Is it the same is person it? as that? Grand, Grant, Grant, Grant. <laughs> no, alright. Cool. Yeah. JD, JD's working on repairing his image, Grant. Oh, well. Is it is it Zoe? <laughs> I'm 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 not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you on, on the live stream, but I can tell you for people who are all like guessing in the forums, it's not slash, it's not epi, um, but everybody knows who this person is. And is it the capitalist? It's not the capitalist. He's a oh. European. <laughs> is, Wait, it what are you? Is, is it milk? Is it a player or what? Is it a it's, player? It's, it's, it's not Zoe and it's not Breaky CPK. Breaky CPK is also American. <laughs> oh and shit, it's Sing Sing. Sing. No. So there, I was about I, to say, there's a forum out there where Toby said all of the names that and have been posted people, aren't it. It's European. Can, like, people should be able to narrow it down by now. And people still kept guessing names which were already guessed and were all American. <laughs> Is it Draskal? 
Just because you live in Europe doesn't make you European, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, bud. Alright. Grant. Oh, yes. It's Mel. Just move on. Oh, really? He just said it wasn't. <laughs> hey, uh, Grant. There's a hook in front of you. Where? <laughs> All right, just go on, Spitlaw. This is embarrassing for me. I can't. Hey, Sam, I, do you I have any uh, fun stories from China? About what? About your teammates. Um, let's see. Oh, Mike. Mike is anywhere you go, you can. He'll make you laugh. I'm telling you, dude. Like that guy. Intentionally or unintentionally? What was no, the dude, most ridiculous I don't know if, thing I, he did in China? I, I don't know. <laughs> you if don't it's know, do you? <laughs> Wait, no, let me think. It has to be something. Um, Besides holding that baby, that was a really cute picture. Oh, <laughs> it's adorable. My Everyone family's agrees. offering yeah. this baby. I <laughs> offer you their baby. The, dude, the first day we went to some like really shitty Chinese place. Cause TV, we just got off a plane and then <laughs> he orders like some fucking um. And in China, you're supposed to share everything. Like you share the food, but uh, he orders chicken or some shit and then. And they give him gloves and he just starts feeding that shit. That was pretty funny. <laughs> I think there's actually a picture of that. There was, but yeah. Otherwise, it's just it's everything. I think um, a lot of the Chinese people there liked him. And they actually called him uh, Uncle Mario. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was what 2009's nickname was for him. So, uh, do the Chinese, like, a serious question, do the Chinese, like, do they consider you guys like close competitors as much as Alliance or no? Like if you talk to the casters, I don't know. Uh, well, I, Flame Wheel was with us. He's he's actually he's a guy of Team Liquid. And then the thing is, if you watched our games, except the game where Siler like um, you know where Siler did that shit. That he was like fucking took, hilarious. He took out his like his his wanker and then put it in all of our asses, but. That was basically, it's kind of explicit, but that's how it was. That's how you can describe that, because you can watch, there's like a video on Dota Cinema for that shit, but. Um. Wait, there's a video of the wanker in the butt? Dude, dude, I'm telling you, dude, it was did that you, harsh. Did you watch the it game? It was that like, harsh, dude. Oh, it, the it game. No, yeah, 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 I saw it, yeah. <laughs> it, it, I don't even know what the hell, like, I just said, but it was that harsh. Were you, you know, the clockwork, or? Dude, there was not even a Were you part of the gank? I was the dark dark shooter that surged the thing, and then he blocked. The, you remember he how he blocked the Ursa from walking in? Oh, that was hilarious! And then and yeah. then round two. The round two, you do Quark. You like rooted Quark three times. That was so funny. If you watch it in retrospect. But besides the LGD game, all our games were relatively close. We had yeah, like. But I, I asked what the Chinese thought about you. Not what you thought about you. Well, that, that's what that's what I'm saying. That's what he said. Okay. Like. Right. He said all. He said all our games were uh, really close, and they liked the way we play. Like, they said uh, we have a lot of early game movement and mid game movement. That's good. But he said our late game is quite. Uh, it's missing some stuff, and that's that's the kind of thing we went into G one knowing. Like, we knew that we could in the mid game and early game we could take on the Chinese teams, but late game wise we lack a lot of that, and it's partly due to. I don't even know what the hell it's due to. It's just lack of experience or something. But playing late game versus those teams is quite hard. And what? even Alliance, even Alliance's games, like they're a really good late game Western team, but all of their games were none of their games went into late game. How do you think so, you guys can improve your late game specifically? I don't know. It's it's hard to it's hard to improve the late game in the Western scene because I feel the Western scene the the games are a lot snowbally. Like you'll mm -hmm. see a team doing well for the first 10 minutes and you know usually the team that wins the game by 10 minutes yeah and you don't see as many comebacks unless it's rapier gyro like it's it's hard for me to explain but I, i'm sure you know what i'm saying but um yeah the games are all more like it, you it's hard it's, it's it's hard to really uh know exactly what you're doing so, so that's what oh, the chinese just Caster said. Well, I think all of us here wish you the best of luck at TI3. Because obviously you're not taking games seriously until then, after today's mishaps. Oh, God. 
Do you guys flame today's mishaps? No, we actually didn't talk about it. If you want to talk about it, yeah, I'm down. Broodstar. What do you think about today's games? I didn't watch any of them, dude. I was out. Alright. It was bad. Liquid lost in 12 minutes, I think. Was it Bulba? Oh, we lost in like... Well, the, was it the, the, oh, the winner and I got a haste root and they got like a triple kill? Did you see that shit? No, I was at Walmart. Oh. Well, you I guys have been practicing, it. right? Like, Mike's been at weddings and funerals and all sorts of shit. Yeah, but it, that should never, like, that shouldn't be an excuse. And after, uh, we did, we, we did learn a lot in G1. Like, we learned a lot of our mistakes and stuff, but I don't know right now. It's, it's hard right now because the style is, like, so different suddenly, and we're trying to find our style. Because, honestly, before, we relied a lot on a few set of picks to win our games, and we snowballed a lot in our lanes. It, it, we don't get those picks anymore, and Keem's kind of figured us out in that I mean, regard. Life Stealer. Life Stealer, Gyro, SD, Clock, those mm -hmm. kind of heroes. But we're trying to switch it up and trying to find new things right, right now. So we'll wait to see how that goes. All right. Um, we're we're going to be, we're gonna be like, it's IG, dude. Go IG ahead. is going through the same shit right now. So. Sam, are there any topics that you want to talk about here before we uh, end the show for the night? Um, I don't know. Do you have any brute star? <laughs> I got exhausted them. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Well, we're uh, almost to an hour and a half here, anyways. So uh, again, take this time to go around the circle and give any shout outs, starting with Grant. A shout outs or shots fired? You know what? You can. Throw some shots too, whatever you want. All right, I just have one shots fired, and it's at AC of the American Dota League. I asked him if I could cast once I got my new graphics card with a team of my own, including Betas and Korok, and he completely ignored me after responding before. Completely hasn't said anything, and I find that disrespectful. And I'm going to be casting from the ticket with no delay. So come on over Twitch.tv/GrandGrant. Don't watch AC. He's literally Hitler. What a rebel. And then my shout-outs are to DSMK, <laughs> my good friend D-Stylistic, who casts with me. Come watch him. Lavix as well. Korok, who's... He's meant the world to me. Like, without him, I would be nowhere. And that's it. Are you somewhere? Yes. <laughs> Dude, did you see me casting XDL finals? Uh, I, I was somewhere. All right, the capitalists, any uh, shout-outs or shots? Uh, I mean, if you have me on again, maybe I'll have shots fired, but not this time. Um, shout out to Chappie, and uh, shout out to uh, Revolution, Big Bad Bird, those guys that I play uh, some OMG mode shit. Good times. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Shout out to Ryan Editor. All right. Broodstar, anything? I only got love from this end, so... This oh. is off the top of my head, so sorry if I forget anyone. Shout out to Canadian... Neng, LM, Haxity, Legato, Mr. Soda, Arteezy, Felony, OMFG, Imba, Snakebite, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, Flying Pants, Gabriel C, Plum, Helg, Ninja Belly. I'm sure I forgot a lot of people, but that's it. You got Felony, right? Yeah, yeah I got did. Felony. All right, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, are, um, what are your thoughts on Arteezy Brewster right now? Like, uh, is, is he growing as a player right now? Isn't he at school? Has he played know. a match with Kaipi? He has played a match. He played yesterday versus uh, EG, actually. Oh, yeah. Didn't they get rolled? Well, he did well, though. He what did a player well. or whatever. Okay. Am I, am I next shout on this Yeah, sure. Um, shout out to my team. Uh, team Liquid and its sponsors, Barracuda, Shiny Things, Twitch, Razor. And then, oh yeah, I have a few more things to say. I was, um, when I was at G1, I actually talked a lot with uh, Hightao. He's actually uh, one of the more famous Chinese casters. And he was asking me a lot of questions about the Western scene and stuff. And then I was asking him about Chinese teams coming over. And then he's like, um, the, Chinese com the Chinese scene, they're willing to bring in Western teams. And they're really interested in maybe setting up a deal with like a, a, a like a Western competition 
kind of like what MLG did with GSO, where they, where for MLG they bring in GSO players, and then for GSO they bring MLG players for uh, for StarCraft Two. If if like DreamHack or something makes a deal with them, and then they hold a qualifier in China, and they they send one, and they help pay for the fun the the fees for the hotel, because they asked for um, supposedly they asked DreamHack if they can help pay for some of the fees for travel and hotel, but they didn't. But that would be pretty cool in the future. Anyways, um, what else is there? Uh, I think that's it. Okay. Toby? Um, shout out to everyone that does awesome shit over at JD. Uh, be it through the wonderful guys that keep Grand Grand out of the forums. Um, and all my guys on the Twitch mods and your editorial guys, ticker guys, all those guys and girls. Um, Shout out to my co-casters who join me all the time. So, Capitalist, pat yourself on the back, man. Um, and a big shout out as the last one to AC, uh, a man that listens to everyone in the community. Um, uh, apparently and, not one person. And, 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 all and, the and, important people. <laughs> all, all, all the important people in the community. Uh, yeah. he's, he's always there for him. He's always there for him. And Grand Grant, it's actually written in the contract that anybody can actually stream up Dota TV. You're huh? not actually yet. Yeah, I didn't say it. I just figured. I know at the beginning I was banned from Twitch for streaming TI something? TI1. I know. Didn't you get some stuff too, Spit? Why didn't we stream for you? You had to ask Ice Frog. I don't even trouble. remember. Oh, I remember. I mean, people were so a little mad, but. Yeah. It's, it's, it's written in the contract for Dota TV whenever you have a Dota TV ticket that all the content is non exclusive, which means anybody who has a Dota TV ticket can cast anything. If I wanted to, I could be casting every single tournament, whatever I wanted to, and not run anything, and just cast everything up to the TV, according to the contracts. All right, no, I wasn't. I was flaming AC for just adding me, saying hello, and then not responding for five days. He's a busy man. He's a so, busy man, right? So five days? Oh, okay. My bad. I didn't realize he had a lot of stuff to do besides cast Dota. Sup? Sup? Someone's in this conversation? Hello? He's Hello? Not he didn't moron. pick up. Retard. Oh, God, you're stupid he as hell. He answered, didn't he? This time he did. No. He didn't answer. I was watching. There's a lurking Desro. God, Desro? shoot us. But I agree. I want to get, shout out to the capitalist. <laughs> Seems like a real cool guy. Along I'm scared he's just like going to yell. Oh, now I want to give a, a counter shout out to uh, God Grant. Thank you. I like that. You should change your name to that. The guy who tries to insult you uh, inadvertently compliments you. Good work. Thank you. Ah, Spit, want any shout outs? Yeah, I'll give a shout out to NA Dota. And to all of our normal hosts, uh, Charlie and Kurt, who unfortunately not make it tonight. And it's a shame if Sam, they Sam they didn't been. think he was going to make it either, but at least we got him at the end here. Um, everyone shout should out. be back next week. Uh, and we'll shoot for the normal time. So. Yep, we will see you guys next week at 8 p.m. Eastern then. Thanks He's for watching. Here, dude. Sup, guys? <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it. How you guys doing? Did you get out of Masters yet, Destro? Fucking Destro. Yeah, dude. I'm GM on two accounts. Peace. <laughs> How have you been, Destro? Are you in Korea right now? He's oh, gone. All right, end the show. Oh, yeah, wait. oh, yeah dude. Did you talk about the ads on the G1? That was, that was pretty funny. Yeah, I talked about freaking ads. Fucking ads. We're hi, Yoshi. Hi, Yoshi. Hi, Yoshi. Hi, Yoshi. Sorry. Weren't they hilarious? Hi, Yoshi. They weren't hilarious at all. Well, how about that song?